This one here. Today we're making this video today about of uh, showing you how force controls work and showing you how to fix garage door opener not opening or not closing. If you go hit that wall button for the opener and if your garage door does not open, could due to a torsion spring right here, a broken torsion spring. Please do not run with a broken spring. Please have a balanced door. An unbalanced door can cause your door to come crashing down potentially if your door is not attached to this opener and the spring may allow banging when the door is closing because it has a lot of tension on it and the coils start to shrink, which you can tell there's a two inch gap right here, which this torsion spring is broken. This is the zinc galvanized spring. That spring is good. It was about three years old. Both of them are going to be swapped out with a professional. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't do this of doing inspection with your door. All things work with this force controls right here. Do not touch them. If your door does not open. If your spring is not broken, and if you don't see no broken gap on it, means that if it's broken, your door will not balance. It won't stay up. It'll just potentially come crashing down. And it's gonna be very heavy for you. To, and you cannot lift it right here, but I actually can lift it right here, putting a lot of force of it. And also, I'm, I am so strong to lift this garage door. Or if you want to see how strong I am to lift this heavy door, because this door is potentially dangerous and this door is broken spring, could put you in risk of getting injured by anybody near a moving door, and this door does not stay open, spring is broken, door will potentially come down. That's really potentially dangerous, so do not pull this re red release rope if your door is unbalanced and if it's in the up position. I suggest you doing it in the down position, which is more safer. But if your springs are too strong, literally hold your hand right here on the door. Make sure you, and then disengage that trolley release rope. And uh, if you, if this door is heavy, if you have a double white door, then that means the door will not fly up. But if the springs are intact, make sure you're just doing it for, for in case if this door starts to come up. If this is flying fully up, it can cause your garage door opener so literally, it makes it easier for it to easily open the door. And also when you close the garage door and then, and then it goes back up, could literally be your downforce right here, which you need to increase it. Not too much. Don't over put this up maximum. It can literally give it too much muscle and it could literally crash into your car right here, which if you didn't park it right, you should make sure it's in the lighter position. Don't put it in the higher position because you know what's going to happen. That's going to literally resist too much force if you have a, a very, a very, very balanced door. But this is a screwdriver opener, which this one's not designed to lift a heavy door. It's meant for small doors. You could use this on the double wide door. You certainly can, but make sure it's not the real heavy ones because you could use it on the double wide door for a spring that it's balanced for a balanced door, but not for only unbalanced doors because you're gonna make it harder for the opener to lift it. And also the up force should be in the lower position as it's supposed to be because I literally did not touch them. But this up position, it's not supposed to be recommended in the higher position because this literally could resist too much force. If you're trying to put your hand on the door, acting like if someone's near a moving door, if the safety eyes right there fail to stop the door from not closing, and it doesn't see any obstruction, there's safety sensors there to stop the door from closing. If there was childs, which is good at safety sensors, you should do a safety reversal system test by putting a two by four on the ground. And if it strikes it, it should go back up. If it doesn't go back up, this glitter could cause by a broken spring right there, causing your door to be very unbalanced, means that the door will come down easily when the door opener is pushing the door down. Literally the force controls literally should not be set too high because that's literally going to give too much muscle to door to push the door down and it could literally hit your car if it wasn't parked even right could literally do damage not to have it in the higher position so i'm going to get a flathead screwdriver lower down this force control right here because literally i can tell it's where the position as it is if you put a lower position the door will go down 
If this door is balanced, you're gonna have to increase it a little. Don't put this up maximum. Just increase it a little like this one, which I increased a little because it's supposed to it's supposed to be in this position. To get yourself a straight flathead screwdriver, not electric drill, to actually lower the downforce. I want to back off the down limit to the lighter position. Let's in the higher position, not up maximum, can literally give it too much muscle, and it can literally cause by your door being, it gives it too much muscle for force when the door is about to close. Like literally, if you try to put your hand on the, put your hand on the garage door while closing, it, if it, it will give it too much muscle and that will tell your, that will tell is your downforce too high. You need to back it off and match this one. And then your garage door will close fine. And then when you put your hand on the garage door, the door will go back up. It's not supposed to resist too much force because that could literally potentially cause severe injury. If someone was near the moving door, if the safe, safety eyes right here fails to stop the door from closing, which that's meant to have a safety feature. If literally, if there was a child near a moving door, or if the sensor doesn't pick up any obstruction, then the garage door has a built-in safety reversal system that can actually detect obstructions to prevent motor damage. So now you just need your straight flathead screwdriver. You just need to lower it down as this one. You gotta lower it down this one so you can be able to match that one. But if you set it too light, and if your springs are too strong, literally make sure it's in the, just increase it a little, not up maximum. Check door balance to make sure if it's running properly, then increase your force. That's where it needs to be, in the lower position. If your door spring breaks, and the garage door closes, when your garage door goes down, it will not go back up. It'll make it very heavy for you trying to, trying to force, trying to force it to, to go up and it will not go up unless the force controls are in the lighter position. And that's why you need to be in a lower position with the force, not too high up. It could give it too much muscle because that's literally, if it hits something, it would really damage your garage door. The up force is in the lighter position as it's supposed to be. Like, if it's in the lower position, when your garage door is balanced, if you have a double wide door like this, then your garage door will close. If your springs are too strong, then your garage door will not close. This is what's gonna happen when your garage door does not close, and then the door jumps back up. literally tells your force control too low. Then increase it a little like this one, and then boom, your garage door closes. But don't set it up maximum. It's literally gonna put too much force and literally put potential danger to your family of getting injured by a moving door. If the safety eyes right here does not reverse and doesn't see anything. If you're near a moving door outside, this is what the safety sensors are to stop the door from closing, goes back up, light blink 10 times. So, this is why it has safety reversal test sensors that actually literally senses the motor force with a RPM sensor inside that tells it the motor speed. If the motor spins slower, it actually stops if it feels the resistance of a heavy door causing the door to be lifted. If this door is heavy, it will not allow it to open unless the force controls are higher, but do not put them in the higher position. That could be potentially dangerous. So that will literally have no problems with the door not closing, which if your light does not blink, could literally tell you have a force control. Do a balance test. It's very important. Not just only think it's only your first control, not only your garage opener having problems, it's your door having the problem. Check your door, because literally there's something not gonna be right. Call a professional. If you feel uncomfortable of doing this, call a professional. They will do inspections. And also they're gonna to address to get your parts replaced on your garage door, which is very important to actually do a balanced test. If your door is not balanced, this is what's gonna cause your garage door not to open. This is what's gonna happen when you run away a broken spring. Literally tells your force controls in the wire position. 
So do not as the concept of those force controls. Do not increase the force controls. If your garage door will not open, can cause by a broken torsion spring, can cause your door to be unbalanced and it can be very heavy for the opener to open the door and it'll be stuck about two inches off the floor. So this literally tells your force control up force is in the lower position as it's supposed to be. Do not set them up maximum. Do a balance test. Not only just think it's your force control thinking your door will not open, literally do not increase it. You're gonna give it too much muscle the motor is going to overheat and breaking the parts or literally blow out the motor capacitor in there. Literally do not just spend all your money just only for the motor parts. Replace the whole entire motor. Don't just spend all your just the parts for the motor or the capacitor. Literally, they could be expensive. So literally don't spend all your money just the motor if your motor is burned out. Replace the garage door opener. Literally be expensive to replace this motor. If your garage door will not open, and also if your spring is not broken like this, if your spring is intact, and if your door, if your door opener does not open when your springs are intact, it could literally be your force controls right here, the up force, but do not contact the force or increasing the force. Do not think it's your force control being the problem. Do a balance test. Literally go to your emergency release rope, disengage the trolley, and then literally lift your door up. If you feel the garage door moving, but it actually gets stuck, if you have sticking or binding, literally replace the rollers. This can be caused by your rollers causing the sticking, or if you have binding when the door is closing and something that's not right with the door, literally call a professional. Don't do this yourself. If you don't know what you're doing, if you're not certified to do replacement parts on garage door, so if your spring is broken right here, if you have a broken spring, do not replace this yourself. This is very dangerous job that I do not recommend for average homeowner. And that is potentially dangerous because your rollers are moving easily, which that's a good part to have rollers right here. Those rollers do move. You can see the shaft right here when I'm turning it, it's actually moving. But if it's actually, if it actually, when you're turning it, if it's stuck, like if the rollers do not move, and that's gonna cause your problem. And if it's if your spring is, is still intact and not broken, and you remember that your door spring was replaced, and if your door does not open, could literally be because your door, you should do a balance test. Don't just think you just need to increase the force. That's not gonna fix it. Who knows? It could literally have the same problem because your door has, it can cause by sticking or binding. Check for that. That could literally cause your garage door to not open or if it doesn't not close, could literally be because your force control is set too light when you're, after your spring were replaced because you replaced your spring, doing operation tests with the motor and then the door does not close and your motor light does not blink, literally tells it's the force control. Literally make sure that's in a lighter position, but this homeowner decides to put a force control too high. So I'm literally gonna lower down the force to this one to match this up and it'll actually work if you have a balanced door. If it's like very, it's like too light, then it's actually going to cause the door not to close. Leave the door alone, call a professional. You don't need to do no limits travels adjustments because it's gonna be in the right position as it is with your door fully opening and fully closing. Not touch those limits travels. That tells how far the door goes up and how far it goes down. So if you have a problem with your garage door not opening and you literally did a door balance test and it appears that your garage door runs properly and runs smoothly and not feel like there's nothing lodged into the track, literally pull the release rope, operate your door, and you'll see the inner slide go up and down. If it goes fully up and if it goes fully down, then that tells us your force control. But if that's if you actually, if your door does not open, if you disengage it and you try operating the motor, and it just stops, that tells you have a, a limits that need to be adjusted. The up limit, that's gonna have to be adjusted right here for some walk close. Make sure the travel limits are in the full up and down position. So do not monkey around with those limits. If you have a problem with your garage door not opening, do not, this is a big no-no, do not increase this up force. If you increase it too higher, it literally caused the garage door to travel over too far and then literally 
boom, it hits the opener like that. The up travel limit's too high. Literally, don't do that. It's potentially dangerous. It could potentially damage your garage door. It'll literally destroy your motor, but there's a built-in stopper bolt right there. Yours may be a chain-driven one or build-driven. Has the same process. Like literally, this is a screwdriver version and there's the ones that's the pin that actually stops it from traveling too far to the motor like it needs to be two inches off the motor so literally don't do that make sure you click like make sure you click subscribe and take care i'll see you next time Bye bye